In this video, I'm going to show you how I connected my Bluetooth scale to my espresso machine so that I can let the scale control my espresso shots automatically. So this kind of idea has already been executed in a few different ways. There is the Gajuino mod that's relatively intensive, and Lance Hendrick shared a video on that recently. It's definitely worth checking out. And there's also the Lamarzoco and Akaya integration, which requires a Linea Mini with the most modern internals in it, and their own special edition Akaya Lunar. I have neither of those. I have a GS3 and my poor little Pixis. And because of this, this is kind of a catalyst for me to see, okay, well, what is it going to take for me to have this on my equipment? So for those that have an Akaya scale and want to add brew by weight as a feature on their espresso machine as unobtrusively as possible, i.e. me, I created this. I call it the shot stopper because, well, that's basically all it does. But hey, it takes like five minutes to install and it stays hidden inside the machine. So it's definitely a win for my brewing experience. So stick around and I'll show you how I made the thing, how it performs, and how you can get your hands on one. As with any circuit board design, I started by breaking down the components and executing them individually. Unfortunately, Akaya doesn't document how this communication is made. They do have an API, but that's more about the connection to the app. Because I'm exclusively talking about the Bluetooth communication, that is a little bit more locked down. But fortunately, there are some other people who have done this on other platforms like Raspberry Pis. So I had some resources to troubleshoot against, and I initially just got the tear command through, which was super exciting. And then with a little bit of tinkering, I was able to get the weight information to come through as well. And at that point, I had all the information I needed from the scale. Now, moving on to interfacing with the espresso machine, I really wanted this to be able to interface with just about any machine, like any of these. Um, and so in order to do that, what is required is to interface with the brew switch. Because one, I need to detect when that button is pressed in order to tear the scale and start measuring weight information. And then two, I need to induce that button. But instead of requiring human interaction to stop the shot base off of weight, which has a surprising level of error to it, this is going to automatically stop the shot with a little bit of learning algorithm to it as well, so that weight improves over time. Because the reality is, is once the shot is complete, there's always gonna be a couple drips afterwards. So this needs to remember those drips and anticipate them for the next one. Anyways, in order to both detect and induce this button press, all you need is something like this. This is an optocoupler, it's a buck. Uh, this one actually has a two channel, so I can do both of those. And if you take a look at the schematic, so basically what is required is that you wire the switch in series with one of the channels, so that way you can detect the current running through the switch, and wire the other channel in parallel to the switch in order to bypass that switch and simulate the switch with the optocoupler. And the thing I probably like the most about this design is if I have any reason not to use it, I can just power it off and the espresso machine will act as if it's not even there. Also with this design, it means it requires as little as one cable in order to install it in the espresso machine. So like I said, this thing can be very quick to install. As for the rest of the circuit, I just have this current limiting resistor and I have the headers over here that will house the microcontroller. And so the next step here with the whole circuit designed is to throw together a pretty ugly prototype, um, which I have here. Uh, it's basically the same idea. It's just all wired up manually. And with that all together, I was ready to test it on both my Sylvia and my GS3. And sure enough, I was successfully reading and inducing these button presses on these machines. So at this point, I could say that the proof of concept was um, proofed. And uh, I went ahead and committed to a printed circuit board. So I threw it together on LTM, checked it, double checked it, and then sent it over to JLC PCB. Got it back in a week. Sure enough, there is a mistake. Got it again a week later, and I had a pretty nice board in front of me. Fortunately, the whole soldering process is really straightforward because this uses exclusively through hole components, which are just much easier to work with. And so I could get this together in a matter of minutes. And at that point, I was ready to legitimately install this in an espresso machine. So there's two types of installations for this thing. There is one that's more generic that uses the spade connectors here. And then there's also these bigger connectors that are mostly used for Lamarzoco AV equipment. So for example, my GS3 AV uh, uses these connectors. To throw it on this GS3 AV here, uh, like I said, we're just using this brew button. So fortunately, it's really easy to get to. It's just a matter of taking off the side panel and the uh, access is right here. So I'm just gonna take a second and move this thing over. Okay, so with the machine off and side panel off, we just have to get to the connector that is on this black box right here. So that's just right behind it. Comes out 
really easily and this connector should look familiar because that is exactly what goes here. This is the brain side, so that's going on that brain connector. And then the other side is for buttons. For that, I have this little off-the-shelf pigtail. Plug that in there. And then plug this right where the other cable came from. And that's it. It's it's in. And so what's cool now is if I fire the thing back up, uh, everything should work totally normally. So if I check these buttons, yep, everything's still working. It's just everything is passing through the board as if it's not even there. Then to throw this in the trusty Sylvia, I have to take this top panel off because the brew button is right in the front and it's accessible through the top. Okay, so with the top out of the way, I now have access to the button, which is below this box. So if I just pull this out, I now have this connector, which means I can now intercept that signal from the brew switch. And at this point, I have these female spade connectors on this end, and I have male connectors at the other end. So I have these uh, male to female spade connectors that are gonna go in here. And then I have these female to female that are going to go on the switch. And so now you can see I've got four female spade connectors. Unfortunately, I have four male ones right here. Also, if you haven't noticed already, I already have this board installed here. I just used some double sided tape to connect it on the side of the frame. So I'm just going to throw these connectors right on here. Again, the Connector end that goes to the, the brain is what I call it, is labeled brain, and the switch is connected to what I call the buttons. Okay, and now it's just a matter of powering it. So I have a little USB-C cable, and I just have that routed down kind of towards the drain, and that goes uh, right here. So I can reprogram it if I want to. It's just kind of hanging out here, and this is how I power it as well. So with everything wired up, I'm going to go ahead and fire this thing up and see how it runs. You may have mentioned I wasn't really paying attention to the polarity of any of these connections because the reality is this whole circuit really just depends on diodes. So if I plug it in anything backwards, I just know I have to switch it out and it's gonna tell me right away. So actually I have no idea if I did it right, let's see. So uh, the button's not doing anything. That's because it's routed through the board, through a diode and it must be in backwards um, because diodes only allow current in one direction. So I just have to switch the um, brain connections out and then it should work just fine. Okay, so the connections are now switched and if I start the group, I can hear it clicking just fine. So that tells me everything's wired up correctly. Now that all the wiring is set, it's time to get into the firmware. So my idea behind this was I wanted it to be pretty platform agnostic, so it can run on some Arduinos. ESP32 is really popular. It's also compatible with uh, Feather footprint boards, such as the particle boards. Uh, these are really nice in case I want to do something a little bit more professional in the, in the end. But uh, as for now, just for simplicity's sake, I just started out with the Arduinos. And so the way this was executed is I just created a simple Arduino library that can be found in Arduino's own library manager. So if you just launch Arduino on your computer, look up Akaya Arduino BLE, and you should see it right in the list and just go ahead and download it. There you'll find a simple getting started program that's just designed to get you connected to the scale. And if you wanna expand on that, you can use that to apply to your own projects. But the real fun happens when you find the Shot Stopper program, which has everything you need in order to brew by weight on an espresso machine. Inside this program, there's also that simple learning algorithm that I mentioned previously. It's all in this one package, so it's just a matter of flashing it to the board and it'll run automatically. So I'm gonna go ahead and seal back up my Sylvia and run some shots and show how that algorithm works. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and plug in the module. You'll see how auto-teared and right now the set point is gonna be 
36 grams. Um, this is a pretty fast and ugly shot, but uh, you know, for a demo, it's I'm impatient. So let's see how it goes. Okay, so it looks like we overshot by about eight tenths of a gram. Gonna go ahead and prep another shot. See how it learned from that. Shot is looking equally gross. And nice, cool. Looks like I just undershot by about a tenth this time. So, so far I've had some really great results on both of these machines. Um, at this point, all the code is on GitHub along with the schematics. So all the resources are there if you want to use this kind of stuff or if you want to use it on the basis for your own project. Uh, that's actually kind of how it is for me right now because this is kind of the foundational steps of the next generation of the Brew Hub, which is my all-encompassing general purpose wireless espresso machine controller. I'm happy to say I do also have a few beta testers out there, so they're gonna be getting their boards soon, so that way there can be a longer list of known machines that this is compatible with. But for now, have fun, feel free to contribute, and happy brewing.